Yes. Okay. All right. How you guys Let us do go. it? It's the Wolf Den Podcast. Today, brought to you in 30 frames per second. <gasps> Wow. <laughs> Amazing. That means we are the inferior version compared to all other versions. Everybody knows the only good podcasts run in 60 frames per second. That's and real true. man podcasts I, run in 120 frames per second. I hate 60 mm-hmm. a lot. Uh huh. And I don't like 30 either. But because all the capture cards I have in this room, they're all just going to run better at 30. So I said, screw it. I just gave up. Why were we running at 60 to begin with? No, we were running at 24. Okay. Because all the cameras were 24. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then... And OBS has a setting you can set at 24. Okay. But the stupid capture cards... Yes. Don't have 24 frame settings at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so here, here we are. Okay. We're, in, we're in 30. The no. other room... I still got my cameras in 24 because they look fine. But for some reason in here, because I'm using shittier uh, capture cards in here because, sorry, guys, (laughs) I I had to prioritize a little bit. (laughs) B-show. The the B-show. Anyway, uh, Will, welcome back. Oh, thanks. It's been been a hot minute. It's been a yeah, while. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm pooping regularly now. You're regular. I'm, as, yeah. as well, our not regular, but like uh, the normal more kind regular of poop not what i was doing last week i know everybody was very concerned yes it, about that it was pretty bad actually <laughs> i should not have been watching you well we oh, well you needed something to do while yeah. you were on the toilet yeah we've all uh experienced as such uh Maj and jameson thanks for the 19 months will wolf damn it thank you for the 42 months That's hey right. wolf bros did you know that you could subscribe with a Prime you sub? You can't via, subscribe. That you can't subscribe with a Prime sub via the Twitch mobile app. I did know that. I learned about this last week when I tro- was tr- lying in bed trying not to puke my guts out. Only to then puke my guts out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently, like, because I saw, you know, I needed to renew my subscription. I'm like, all right, I'll just, all right, I'll just use the Prime sub. And I'm looking, and you can't renew with your Prime account on the mobile app yeah you have to do it from the web browser There's, i did not know that shows you how much i use twitch they also take a cut if you do it from the mobile app because it's an in-game in-app purchase right you know yeah so there's that and the same thing with bits and everything right right just don't just don't use the mobile us. app yeah, don't ever watch <laughs> us on a mobile uh also john mccheese thank you for the eight months okay what are we talking about today? We got a lot. Of uh, we here. do have a lot to talk about today. We have uh, details on the PlayStation Portal. Oh yeah, that's important. That's a big deal. It's probably the biggest deal. Um, also, the Lenovo Go, yes. which we talked about last week. Yes. Uh, big news already. Is now it's the official news because I think last week was just a leak. Uh, I think it's another leak. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, no. It's on the Lenovo website, but okay. there's more. Le- there's a lot more information right. now. Uh, we got a lot of Microsoft news. None of it has to do with the acquisition of Activision, believe it or not. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, last guys. Week you don't was, have to hear Last about week that. was Gamescom, and Phil Spencer gave an interview, and there was a lot of like information that came from that. Uh, so there's stuff to talk about there. Uh, uh, one yeah. of our highest viewed podcasts is uh, us attempting to recap everything that happened during the Activision acquisition. I'm sure people really wanted to know what was going on. And it was, you know, probably out of date yeah. by now, but it's still one of the highest viewed podcasts. Um, so what we're trying to say is we're going to be talking a lot more about the Activision yeah. acquisition. But not today. No. <laughs> no. There's a lot of other Microsoft news not involving that. Yes. But before we talk about that, we would like to talk about games you can get for free. Yes. And you're getting one uh, tomorrow, actually. If for, you're Free in quotes. Yes. Because you have to be subscribed to Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, and it's Excite Bike 64. Interesting. Uh, race across 20 tracks and set the Daredevil inside you free in Excite Bike 64, coming to Nintendo Switch on coming to Nintendo Switch for Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack on August 30th. Uh, that I didn't know we didn't already have this. No, <laughs> this seems pretty <laughs> obvious. 
It seems obvious in hindsight. I remember Excite Bike 64 came out like towards the end of the N64's life cycle. Really? Yeah. Oh. I remember it being like well liked mm -hmm. and like kind of popular when it came out. It was right at the cusp of like when extreme sports were starting to become like a big video game uh genre mm -hmm. in and of itself. I mean, Excite the Excite Bike on NES is like everybody knows and I think just pretends to like no, it's good. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I because right. I, I, when I went back to play all of the NES games on Nintendo Switch Online, yeah, uh, I liked that one. Okay, compared to every other game that wasn't Mario, right? <laughs> as far as I know, this one actually plays more like a traditional motocross game, but mm -hmm. done in like you know the Nintendo way. So they're like, they're, there's fun shit in it. Okay, so I have never played this, and I would like to try. It I know we I did like Excite Bike. We own it because I bought it after the fact, but I've never played it. But I've always do, wanted we do to play own it. it? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Not I do that. want to play it, so maybe I'll I'll bust out the old switcheroo for this. Yeah, no, I I want to give it a shot. Uh, and that is uh, August thirtieth tomorrow. Oh yeah, that will be tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Where do we go from here? Let's just dive right into the PlayStation Portal. Yes, stuff. Okay, Sony is officially launching its portable PlayStation later this year, the PlayStation Portal Remote Player. The handheld device will stream PS5 games over Wi-Fi and feature an 8-inch LCD screen running at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Sony says that the Portal will be available later this year at $199.99 US. The PlayStation Portal will connect remotely to your PlayStation 5 over Wi-Fi, so you'll be able to swiftly jump from playing on your PlayStation 5 over to your PlayStation Portal, says Hideki uh, Nishino, Senior Vice President of Platform Experience at Sony Interactive Entertainment. PlayStation Portal can play supported games that are installed on your PlayStation 5 console and use the DualSense controller. The PlayStation Portal features prominent controllers on each side of uh, on each side that look very much like the DualSense controller. Uh, they support adaptive triggers and haptic feedback, so PS5 games will feel similar to using a dedicated DualSense controller. Uh, the PlayStation Portal will also be capable of playing media, as the home screen has a dedicated section for its has a dedicated section for it as it's mirroring your PlayStation 5. You won't be able to run anything locally though, so if you don't have Wi-Fi, then you're out of luck. Strangely, the $200 handheld won't work with Sony's incoming cloud streaming for PS5 games. Games that must be games that must be streamed on the PS5 using PS Plus Premium membership are not compatible, says so, Sony. So, oh, says Sony. Yes. Okay, cuz I was Thinking that that was just people no conjecturizing the, the quote the direct quote from Sony games that must be streamed on PlayStation Five using a PlayStation Plus premium membership are not compatible. That is dumb. Yes. So the PlayStation Portal is really a way to stream PS Five games you already have installed on your PS Five. Uh, onto a handheld for remote play. You'll need an internet connection capable of at least five megabits uh, per second, and Sony is recommending 15 for the best experience. That's pretty low. It's low. Well, you gotta think you're. It's local. It's all yeah. local. It's going from, you know, your PS5 that's over there to you that's over there. It yeah. doesn't have to do anything too strenuous. That's a good point. So I don't know exactly how that works. A lot of Things that do that still touch a server at some point. Right. So it might not be as cut and dry as going from your uh, PlayStation to your router and then to your device. It might go phone home, like all the way to a Sony server yeah. at some point. Um, well, I mean, if you're playing an online game, it's definitely going Oh, well, yeah, to. but that's from the PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know exactly how this works. Hopefully... You don't actually need a broadband connection that is capable of over 15 megabits per second. Hopefully, right. you just need a, uh, a router that's capable yeah. of it. And almost any router you can get will be more than that. I right. don't know of one that can be worse than that. I don't <laughs> no. even think like back in the day like, no. like we ever had a router no. that was capable of less than 15 megabits per second. Um, 
So maybe like an 802.11 B? What's the what's the shit G? What's the know. shit one? I don't know. The shit one maybe. Well, uh but I I think that uh most people should be capable of this. But again, I've done remote play in my house with all of my fancy technology. Got mm-hmm. fucking Wi-Fi 6. You know there's 7 now? Yeah. So throw out all your routers. <laughs> well, I still got lag. So yeah. I am still highly skeptical of how this is going to work. $200? That blew my mind. Yeah. That was well, crazy. Because it's, you know, it doesn't do a lot, including, as the article continues, the PlayStation Portal doesn't have Bluetooth, so you won't be able to connect wireless headphones or Sony's Pulse 3D headset. Instead, it uses a Sony Link wireless technology, a new proprietary standard for PlayStation devices. PlayStation Link is designed to deliver low latency, lossless audio, and Sony is also including Sony is also launching a wireless headset and buds that support PlayStation Link. You'll be able to use this new headset or buds for uh, with a PlayStation 5 through a USB adapter. But with the rumored PS5 Slim on its way, it's easy to imagine the PlayStation Link will be integrated into future PS5 models. The PlayStation Link standard will also be available for third-party manufacturers. Thankfully, the PlayStation Portal uh, will also include a 3.5mm headphone jack. I don't understand the point of proprietary wireless audio. Me neither. Doesn't Microsoft have their own proprietary wireless audio? I think so, but they still let you use Bluetooth. Yeah, so there is a slight lag with Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, but at least, yeah, Microsoft lets you use it. Yeah, there's a there's a slight lag with Bluetooth, but I think for 99% of the people, that's not noticeable. Yeah. You know, we live in a world where, you know, everything connects to Bluetooth headphones. I, uh, Mark, Marcus Brownlee brought it up. If Apple had done something where you can only use AirPods on the iPhone, people would lose their minds. People would not stand for it. This is the equivalent of that in the gaming sphere. Yeah. You have this $200 device and you probably have the the PlayStation headphones already. You can't use them now. You have to get this specific proprietary headphone or earbuds, and that's going to be another $200. So really, your two hundred dollar device now becomes a four hundred dollar device. The Sony Gold uh, that they've had forever, uh, those headsets had a dongle. Yeah, I think they were, it was just a two point four gigahertz. But right. still, I don't, I don't know if this new iteration of the PlayStation Five would even have it integrated. I think you might still need a dongle. Yeah. <laughs> um. Squid Vorb in the chat says that definitely has d- Bluetooth disabled in software. Most devices have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the same chip. Hmm. And it is an Android tablet. Right. That would be so messed up. Yeah. Because again, I like to bring this up often. Sony merged with Ericsson. Yeah. And they're the ones who created Bluetooth. Yeah. So... I don't, I, I don't understand why they're so averse to Bluetooth. Even know. though the controllers run on Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, Wolfden Dad. Oh, hey, Dad. Welcome back, Sun One. Glad Thanks. to see you weren't permanently replaced by an empty chair. Uh, P.S. Where's my Vegas Mario Kart knockoff slot machine video? That's a you question, so I'm going to let you handle that. I don't have the answer. We, we've had a whole video, and I didn't like it, so I shelved it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do have to go over to his house and film him though for yeah. a, for a thing. Um, so there was something else I want. Okay, so I tweeted about this. Yeah, and uh, I got a lot of crap from people uh for saying uh that the audio is proprietary because they thought that I was alluding that there was no headphone jack. No. I th- I I mean I get what you're saying. Yeah, the wireless the wireless audio is proprietary. Yeah, unless you want to plug something into the headphone jack. Yeah, I mean, and that was it. That was that guy, uh, Tom Warren or something. Yeah, that, that journalist, the guy who wrote this article. Oh yeah, he said it, and then I just kind of parroted. But I, when he wrote that, I didn't assume there was no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You know, I just assumed that the wireless was proprietary. I mean, look, we live in an age where 
I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if people assumed they didn't come with a headphone jack. Mm -hmm. Those things are, you know, like gold out here. <laughs> um, did you see? This is completely off topic. Yes. I saw. So we've already been a little skeptical, but that the next iPhone is going to have USB C. Right. But I saw leaked uh, cables that would come in the box, braided cables. Braided. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I didn't see and that. They're colored. I didn't see that. I saw uh, allegedly the port itself. Oh. There's a picture of the port and the, uh, different colors for the different colors of iPhone. Oh, that's okay. what I saw. Okay. And that's hard to tell because USB -C, a USB-C port and a Lightning port look exactly the same unless you know what to look for. Well, yeah, no, they look exactly yeah. the same. It's like a little thinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so still, regardless of all of that, I was still blown away by the by the price point. Yeah. I'm very disappointed that they're doubling down that you won't be able to play uh, PlayStation Plus premium streaming games. I think that's Because that's such a big selling point. That's going to definitely keep people from buying this. Yeah. I think. You've just taken like a niche product and you've made that niche smaller. Mm -hmm. Because... What's the percentage of people that actually use remote play regularly? And is that enough people to want to spend $200 on an extra device just so they can keep playing The Last of Us on the toilet? Well, their hope is that they're going to get more people that want to play The Last of Us on the toilet. Right. You got you get a poop attack in the middle of play and you don't have to stop playing. But... Okay, so remote play has been around since the PlayStation Three when the Vita came out, and you know it wasn't perfect on the on the PlayStation Three, obviously, but they integrated that into the PlayStation Four so that every game had remote play capabilities, and they expanded it to not just be on you need a Vita, you can also do it on your phone or on your laptop. So remote play has been around for over a decade now. In that ten year time frame. Has it been taken advantage of enough to the point where Sony can justify releasing a two hundred dollar product that only does one thing? They're they're betting. All these companies are betting that uh, game streaming is going to be an important part of the future of gaming. Right. Uh, Remote play is a specific niche on top. It's it's an added right, you know, yeah. level below that. Um, I still think that they were trying to get PlayStation Plus Premium on here. Uh huh. Uh, I think they failed to meet the deadline that they needed to, and now they're like, it will not be there. Don't expect it. Right. And hopefully, it will come eventually, but. It's such a massive selling point that is being purposely removed for almost no reason. I feel like if they delayed this to get it to release with the launch of their cloud streaming service, like their proper cloud streaming service, and even if they have to like increase the price by like 50 or or $100, then they would have had a product people would have actually won and people would have mm. bought. As it stands right now, I find this to be such a small user base. I don't see this being successful. I see this maybe like selling well in the first month, but then nothing. Yeah. I don't really understand what the market is. I, I made a poll in chat. Uh, do you want a PlayStation portal? Just mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're actually going to get it, but are you, do you want it? You know, uh, say yes or no in, in the poll. Cause I'm genuinely curious if people want this, I'm going to get it because I want to try it out. But right. I don't think I would ever even consider it uh, otherwise because there's just so many other ways to do it. And you also don't need to ever do it. Yeah. You, you, you <laughs> could just play it on your PlayStation. Yeah. And if you can't, maybe you got to take a shit. Uh, do it on your phone, you know? I should also for the point very out, short period of time that you have to do, uh, withstand playing on yeah. your phone, you you know. You also, can... remember the thing has to be on. The PlayStation Five has to be on yep. in order to use it. And who knows if it's going to be on? You could turn it on, and then it'll just be off because the fucking thing doesn't work right. <laughs> well, assuming it works well, you know, I keep my, I, you know, I keep my video games in my basement. So you know, I get my PS Five, I go downstairs, 
I turn it on, and then I gotta go back upstairs <laughs> to play on my Project Q. So I leave mine in sleep mode. Right. And God willing, it's been in sleep mode for a long time. Mm-hmm. So good. But I will say, I've dabbled with remote play, and okay, so I already have problems where the PlayStation 5 will just turn itself off. Right. But lately, that hasn't really been the problem. The mm-hmm. new problem is it will disconnect from remote play and you need to reconnect it. And the only way to reconnect it is to go to your PlayStation 5, turn mm-hmm. it on, go to the settings, get the code, and then type it into the device that you have. So if you're like going on a vacation, yeah. going away from home or something, and you want to try remote play or 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 maybe uh, you do decide you need to take a shit and you need to pick up your device, you might have to resync it. Yeah. Hopefully... That will be more streamlined with a device that is dedicated to doing that. Yeah. But these are all things we don't know. This is just how PlayStation Remote Play works now. I'm hoping it will get better, and I'm hoping it's better with a $200 proprietary device. Yeah. Should also point out, uh, according to IGN, the battery size hasn't been finalized yet, so we don't know how long this will run. CNET says Sony is targeting something similar to the DualSense battery life, so around seven to nine hours. Yeah, so I the direct quote from Sony is that they are targeting uh, battery life similar to the DualSense. Right. That's what they said. And I remember in my brain thinking that the DualSense has a very bad battery. Like, like in terms of controllers, the battery is very short. Right. Um, so I went looking on what the stat is for how long a battery is. And I think Sony says 12 hours for a DualSense battery. Right. Which is insane yeah. for a handheld in, in 2023. Yeah. I'm playing the Steam Deck for 45 minutes before <laughs> it turns off. Um, but realistically, we see around like eight hours in a DualSense controller. Yeah. So still eight hours is great. Eight yeah. hours is better than a Switch. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, I, yeah, keep in mind, there doesn't sound like there's any processing going on on this device mm-hmm. other than streaming a signal to it. So yeah seven eight hours kind of makes sense it's a glorified video player yeah it's it's playing a video yeah you know it's just limited lag in in the video Mm -hmm. now i talked about this with wood and he said it's really cool because a dual sense controller is already expensive and now you're getting a dual sense controller and a screen Mm -hmm. and i was like but it's not a dual sense controller it's a gaming device (laughs) (laughs) because you can't use it as a dual sense controller right uh, for two reasons. One of them is that uh, it has to be player one. Yeah. And the other is that it does not have Bluetooth or any way to connect like a controller does. It has to connect to your router. Yeah. So you're going to be... I mean, hopefully the lag is not noticeable to most people, but you're going to have more lag than an actual DualSense controller. Yeah. So... I mean, I'm sure people can use it as an extra controller as long as you're doing it with player one, but that would be a really strange thing to do and you'd be kind of purposely nerfing yourself if you do that. A dual sense controller on its own is $70. Mm-hmm. And so like I get like a portable monitor is like around like what, 100 bucks? Yeah, you can get one for like 100 bucks. Yeah, so you're basically paying the price of a dual sense controller, the price of a portable monitor plus an extra thirty dollars to glue the whole thing together i think it's more accurate to say that you're getting like an android tablet or or uh or phone because uh it still needs to connect to the internet it, right. it, it has it, it has more function than just a monitor but you know? then again like an android phone or tablet does more than just play yeah. playstation 5 games being that's from a good playstation point. 5 that's you know, a that's, good point. That's just keeps going back to what I'm saying. The use case for this device is so limited. You know, mm-hmm. you really gotta fucking love PlayStation <laughs> Five if you want this thing. Yeah. Or, or it, like this is extreme. If you are into the idea of remote play, but you're not tech savvy enough to connect it to your phone or your laptop, then this is for you. That's that's who it's for. And and Sony is banking on that most of their user base doesn't want to go through the rigmarole of connecting their phone right. or, or a tablet to a controller to and then to the device to, to the like, PlayStation. We're 5. not gonna want to go through the rigmarole. But, but like but but they created the rigmarole is the pro <laughs> is my yeah. biggest problem. Right. Like 
I've messed around with Backbone controller. That's the only controller that you're going to get right now that will let you do uh, remote play on an Android or, or iPhone device. That is not a DualSense. So you can only use a DualSense controller or the Backbone controller, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I hesitate to recommend the Backbone controller. It is the best value because if you get the Backbone controller, you can still do PlayStation Remote Play and Xbox Remote Play with the PlayStation branded dual uh, 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 Backbone controller because Xbox doesn't give a shit. Yeah. But I feel bad recommending it because it's you're rewarding Sony for creating the walled garden. Right. You know, and that feels really wrong to me. Well, there's a walled garden, mm -hmm. and then there's a walled garden with a cement roof on it. Yeah, <laughs> and that Sony added a cement roof. Yeah. So, but but for no reason. Yeah. Like like sometimes I can see why the walled garden exists. Yeah. Like, exactly. like sometimes we're, we're both using MacBooks. We understand yeah. the concept of a walled garden. Apple decided a few years ago, like we can't have Intel chips anymore because we can make them better. Yeah. Like we we, we know uh, we need to make all of the chips. If we control all of the chips, we'll be able to make a better product. Yeah. And then they did. This thing has like a <laughs> fucking two day battery life yeah. because of that. The 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 jump in spec when they started making their own shit was gigantic. Yeah. Um, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And Apple does some shit that doesn't make any sense too. Yeah. Like, like, why can't I text an Android phone? Yeah. You know. Well, you can. It's just gonna be puke green when. You yeah. Know. Well. There I go talking, talking about, about puke again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know I was sick last week? So. It's again. It's just that. PlayStation is purposely making things. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're trying to force you into getting their shit and doing it yeah. their way when they don't really have to. They could make things more accessible to more people if they open things up a little yeah, bit. That's absolutely. what makes me mad about it. Uh, Mad Dyslexic says, I think you're forgetting about families. The best part of the Wii U was the separate pad. My family can watch TV and I can still play my video games uninterrupted. Yes, that is a good use. That is a good use case for it. Um, but again, is that going to be a big enough use case, uh, for this thing to be a success? It wasn't. It wasn't for the Wii, for the Wii U. <laughs> True. And you know, the people who owned the Wii U, did they use that feature that often? I would say, so in Japan specifically, uh, they usually have like one TV per household. So, mm -hmm. uh, I did hear that the Wii U was used pretty often for that. Also though, the Vita. Yes. The Vita was used very often for its remote play feature uh, with PlayStation 4. I yeah. mean, they tried to with 3, but they, they botched the marketing on it. Uh, but no, specifically in Japan, the remote play was a big deal. So, uh, yes, I think that this will be used for that. Uh, and I think that a $200 price point uh makes it a little bit easier of a decision for people yes that would want to use it as a peripheral like that because that this is just a glorified peripheral yes um but still it has to work a lot better than remote play works right now because uh -huh. right now remote play if you bought a 200 dollars device and then you have a remote play experience like i've had in on all of my different devices even mm -hmm. a wi-fi 6 device uh, you're going to be very, very disappointed because I would argue that it's, uh, would I say unplayable? Some games would be unplayable. Right. Like I would not play a competitive Call of Duty game. Like I wouldn't want to play online on anything right. uh, using remote play because you can have like one blip and that's the, that you're dead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, hopefully it works better. I mean, it better because it's a proprietary device. Anyway, I'm excited to see Bob jailbreak the portal, though. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be impossible. Because yeah. uh, it, I know it's just Android, but first of all, it's going to have like no power in it. Second of all, Sony's really good at uh, making it such a pain in the ass to, to, to break through yeah. their, their stuff. So uh, I don't think it's going to be broken into anytime soon at all. When is this out? Do we have a date? Uh, November. Okay. Got a ways to go. Yeah. Still time to announce 
uh, PlayStation Plus Premium streaming. Yeah. We do have an answer to our poll. We're looking at... Uh, no. Seventy nine percent do not want it. Okay, and I don't blame them. I mean, it makes sense. All right, now we will move on. Oh okay. well, let's let's thank some people. Yes. Uh, random heart to thank you for the seventeen months. I picked up a Sony Trinitron about an hour ago at a local head shop that was closing. They gave it to me for free because my car overheated on the highway, which made me late. It was 45 minutes away. Oh, my God. Wow. A head shop was giving away a Trinitron? <laughs> that must be some weird? generous head shop. Isn't that weird? Wicked Spooky, thank you for the 16 months. Yo, guys, I hope you're doing balls. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. Ray, Danny, thank you for the 15 months. Uh, I will only buy it if there's a way to do Xbox or I'll play on it as well. I like it better than a G Cloud because it had the Sony quality in the controls. You are much better off just getting a shitty Android phone yeah. and getting a backbone controller if you want to do both. All right. Now we will talk about the brand new gaming handheld. Yes. Lenovo Legion Go. Here she is. Why is the camera only on me? I don't know. Whatever. Hopefully when you start talking, it'll yeah. switch to you. Uh, specifications for the rumored handheld gaming PC by Lenovo, reportedly dubbed the Legion Go, uh, seem to have been leaked. According to Windows Report, the Legion Go is slated to run an AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor. And that that is shown... what the uh, ROG Ally uses. Okay. And it will be shown off on September 1st. Um, that's in two days. According to a press release for the Lenovo Legion Go uh, acquired by the Windows Report, the handheld gaming PC will feature a high resolution uh, 2560 by 1600 display that measures in at 8.8 inches and supports a refresh rate of 144 hertz. Uh, much like the ROG, uh, much like the ROG Ally, the Legion Go will also run Windows 11, presumably with Lenovo's own software on top to make navigating the OS without a mouse and keyboard possible. Here are the complete specs. So we got 8.8 inch uh, QHD display, uh, IPS, 1610 uh, aspect ratio with 10 point touch and 144 hertz refresh that rate. That is stupid. <laughs> That's so much for an eight inch screen. For an 8.8, so a 9 so inches, nine pretty much. Yeah. And it's a 16 by 10, which is yeah. what the Steam Deck is. Uh, they're really going for specs here. Yeah. 144 hertz, and where was the resolution? It was oh, QHD. Yeah. The, you, first of all, you're not seeing QHD at that small of a, right. of, of a, of a screen. Second, none of these games are going to run that high. Like, yeah. I have... An ROG ally with that uh, has a Ryzen set, uh, Z1 Extreme, and nothing that has a 120 hertz screen, which is yeah. also crazy. Uh, nothing runs that high. Not right. nothing's getting that. Cr Maybe Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. I haven't tried that. Uh, but yeah, that that it uh, like you're just going for a, a, a number there. It'd be really cool to see some games at that high frame rate yeah. in, in a handheld, but. The resolution is a bit much, and even that frame rate's a, a bit much right right now. Mm -hmm. What is a game? Am I th what's a game that would run like that? Name one that would run at that full resolution and 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 uh, frame rate. Counter Strike, maybe. I know that's an older game. No, you don't think so? No, it it, it uh, I uh, no, <laughs> it it doesn't. If that's I don't think that game is that well optimized. Okay. It runs on like everything. Yeah. But I think when you start like getting the frame rate up and stuff, it starts getting weird. Got it. Okay. Well, it's also going to have a touch, a multi-finger touchpad, uh, an AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor with AMD RDNA graphics, uh, 16 gigs of LP DDR5 X memory, uh, storage, uh, 250 256 gigs, 512 gigs, or one terabyte PCIe, uh, 4.0 NVMe, uh, M.2 SSD, MF, 
yeah, whatever. Uh, and <laughs> Windows 11 Home. Legion Go also seems to feature separate batteries for its controllers, which in indicates that there might be a way to operate the Legion Go as a tablet without the controllers. The controller features a battery capacity of uh, 900 mega amps. Uh, the an accessory called the Lenovo Legion E510 7.1 RGB gaming in ear headphones is also allegedly detailed in the affirmation press, press release, as well as AR glasses in the form of Lenovo Legion glasses. These will come with a micro OLED display rendering at 1080p uh, resolution per eye with high fidelity built-in speakers. Yeah, so that's another thing is that they seem to have those like glasses type things. Yeah. You know, I have some in the other oh. room that I've never even opened. Is it the one that's sponsoring the all the YouTubers now? Vitcher. Yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they wanted... So I tried them and I didn't like them. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted to sponsor me mm -hmm. and i said no because i don't like them and they said try them again we think you'll like them and then i just never did and i they <laughs> sent them to me and i said no mm -hmm. and i never I, I said i still don't like them and i never even tried them right. i just think the whole concept of ar glasses is stupid because like you have the like what's the difference between having the switch in your hand and having the switch in the glasses? I think the the whole concept is it gives you like a bigger screen to look at, but it's a worse screen. I know. I've seen it. It's <laughs> it's stupid. I mean, look, man. <laughs> I I I'm hoping we get to a future where I can put my my regular ass Costco glasses on. I tap the side and I just get like minority report shit in my eye. Yeah. All the time. Like a like, Google that's glass. Cool. Yeah. So I'm okay with any, anyone who wants to try and like take a baby step towards that. Yeah. So I'm not going to say anything bad about these guys. Well, I mean, I'm definitely not trying the, the AR glasses that that seems like a waste. I do want to try the, uh, Lenovo go. Right. Did, did you say the price? Right? I did not say the price. Uh, it will reportedly launch in October with a price of $800. The AR glasses will allegedly be $500 and the earbuds will uh, retail for $50. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. There is a thing. So am, am I tripping? $1,350 if you want the whole thing. I'm getting my handhelds confused because there is one that has this. The screen will slot into like a like a like a like a like a vr headset type yeah thing. but this i think is too big this thing looks insanely big uh it looks bigger than a steam deck and uh -huh. it looks thick and you see the joy uh, in the it's got joy cons yeah. they leaked a uh, trailer and you see the joy con looking things and they're mm. thick uh there's also like he put them into a base and was like sliding it around the desk okay that seemed pretty cool but mm -hmm. i don't know what game yeah. is gonna is gonna use that um so Lenovo is going to have their own version of like uh, uh, a front end, like yeah. similar to what uh, Armory Crate is on the ROG Ally. So that's pretty cool, right. I think. Uh, I think Lenovo would actually probably do a pretty good job with that. Somebody in the chat said, "Hey, where's the little red nub on on the on the on on the on the, on the device? You know, like how the laptops have a little oh, red yeah, nub, yeah. yeah, the ThinkPads, yeah." Uh, so. I found a spec breakdown between the Lenovo Go, ROG Ally, and the Steam Deck. Uh, we don't really care about the Steam Deck because that's such a that's in a on a whole different that's in a whole different world. Right. Um, the Lenovo Go is eight hundred dollars. Right. Uh, the ROG Ally is also eight hundred dollars. Um, the Lenovo Go says up to. AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme and the ROG Ally is Z1 Extreme and just regular Z1. So I don't know if the $800 is just for the lower end model. Maybe you won't get a Z1 Extreme. I don't know. Uh, anyway, the RAM seems to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Maybe not exactly. I don't know what... Is it more hertz? I don't, I don't know. Uh, storage, uh, 256, 512, and 1 terabyte. And the RG Ally 256 and 512. I'm probably just going to get the lowest because I just don't. I'm just going to use this once and then yeah. get rid of it. Um, okay. The screen obviously is a huge difference between the two. But again, I don't think you're going to be getting this 
I don't think it's a good idea to get this for the screen spec because you're never going to hit that high fidelity. Right. People in the chat were saying uh, Dead Cells runs pretty pretty big and fast, but uh -huh. it's fucking Dead Cells. Yeah. Also, somebody said The Tourist, which probably would run fine because that can run at 8K. It's like right. the only 8K game. Anyway, two USB-C uh, Type-C, which is great. I like when they have two of those. Mm -hmm. uh, one micro SD card slot, which is also great. Uh, the RG Ally has one, but I'd argue it's borderline unusable because uh, it has problems. Right. Uh, it's got a battery. That seems to be the same. Uh, it's heavy as fuck. It's, 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 as, it's heavier than the RG Ally without the controllers on it you put the wow. controllers on it and then it's even heavier yeah uh it's almost as heavy as the steam deck without the controllers mm. on it. uh and then that's it it seems to be pretty comparable to the rog ally pretty much across the board right um so i don't know how much being able to take the joy con off is gonna help things yeah but yeah, again, I I think the screen is like a little overkill. Like we don't need all that. That's yeah. the, like a like kind of a waste. But I'll try it and I'll and I'll see I'll see what happens. Am I am I wrong about the RG Ally? Is is it a is it? Oh, the base version is six hundred dollars for the RG Ally. I'm okay. I am wrong. So, so these things are just getting more and more expensive. Well, hold on, because that. So the Lenovo ghosted up to Z1 Extreme. Yeah. The six hundred dollar Ally is a regular Z1, not the Extreme. Got it. So how much is the Ally with the Z1 Extreme? Is the oh wait, I I'm I'm on BestBuy.com. Seven hundred. Okay, so it's a hundred dollars cheaper for the Z1 Extreme Ally. Got it. So a hundred dollars extra to take your joy con off <laughs> and to get a higher fidelity it's a screen. big ass screen yeah, yeah which i don't think is worth it also it's going to be big and loud and, mm -hmm. and shitty so where is this rank in terms of power with the likes of the deck and the ally it is the same power as the as as the ally and yeah. I argued that the Ally is around the same power as the Steam Deck because games are optimized for the Steam Deck where they're not optimized for a Z1 Extreme. Does that make sense? But the Z1 Extreme should be... The, the Ally should be more powerful physically, but uh, most games are are at least optimized a little bit for, for the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I don't know if anybody's interested in the Lenovo Go, but there's all your Lenovo Go information. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray Danny, thanks for the 15 months. And Just David Barber, thank you for the 25. Just got here. Did you see the new analog pocket? Want to just talk about that now? Let's just talk about that now. All right. We did see the new analog pocket. It's spooky. Because <laughs> it glows in the dark. It looks really cool. It does. Uh, analog pocket... Uh, glow in the dark edition available in highly limited qualities quantities sorry don't know the difference uh 250 bucks on sale september 1st and is shipping september 5th i'm getting one Ooh. Uh, I, I they said i am a, one of less than five people wow that they're sending it to wow me. Look uh, at you. Uh, this this got announced, and I checked my email, and they yeah. emailed me like weeks ago. And I was like, please <laughs> give me one. Uh, they also have additional news. 99.9% um, .9 of all Pocket pre-orders have shipped. Uh, the final remaining shipping of this week. Pocket accessories are back in stock and shipping now. The Pocket Black and White are now out of stock, but will be restocking ASAP. Um they have significantly reduced domestic shipping costs by 30 to 50%. Uh, and That's lastly, good. insurance has been added to all shipping options automatically for free. It covers lost packages, theft, and damages. They are partnering with Route to offer this service. So how much is a regular analog pocket? Is it 220? Because this is 250. 200 or 220. No, they raised it. It used to be yeah, 200 I know, I know they, raised they raised it. it. 
Uh, so it's got to be like 220 or something. Yeah. Yeah, 220. Okay. Uh, all of the pictures look awesome. Oh, my they, God, They did yeah. such a good job with the, the, they always They always have great design. Mm -hmm. Look at this on their website. Lights on, lights off. Yeah. That's lights cool. On, lights off. Uh, so I saw some discourse online. Uh, certain other YouTubers said, who asked for this? <laughs> uh, give us, uh, uh, give us another device with a screen that's three by two, like a Game Boy Advance. And it's like, that's a different thing. Yeah, they, they could do that later. This the, is this is a fun yeah, little just, variant. Let them have a little fun. You don't, in the meantime, if you already have man. an analog pocket, you don't need this. Yeah, this is just for like goofs and gaffs. You know, this isn't the first time Analog's done this. They did a special edition uh, Mega SG. Uh, was a collab with Hyperdub, and they did a special edition uh, Super NT. That was a collab with uh, Ghostly. And those were very limited runs. They were also about uh, 250 bucks. They're really nice looking, but yeah. I already have a Mega SG. I don't necessarily need that. What is that? Oh, that's a little cat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these are just little fun little stupid things. I'm yeah. sure that they're developing other hardware. Yeah. But like, it's kind of crazy to be like, who asked for another color? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a whole new device. You, you see this in the action figure realm all the time like you know a company will release a figure and then they'll release like a retail exclusive variant of said figure where it's the same figure but just in a different color mcfarland toys does this all the time they'll release a batman and then they release like a amazon exclusive batman that's black and white mm -hmm. and you don't need the black and white one if you have the regular one yeah that's just for goofs and gaffs the other one i would like, never have I looked at this and I was like, I want that. I'm not yeah. buying that because I already have an. Yeah, it's pocket. something to yeah you can appreciate from afar if you're not going to get it. But I will say that in the past, pre YouTube, Bob mm -hmm. would be on the fence about getting a device, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I and I'd be like, I don't need that. I already have the old one, or I already have something. Yeah. I don't really need to spend the money on that. But then they make a special edition, and I'm like, that's all right. I'm done. I'm getting it. You know yeah. that that's the determining factor. I mean, for me. you know, current Will did that with the PlayStation. Yeah, exactly. Because so. like. Maybe you're not an early adopter and yeah. you want to jump in later. That's the perfect opportunity yeah. to jump like, in later. I, I knew I wanted to wait until Spider-Man came out at least to get a PS5. And like, you know, chances are they will release a special edition version. And they did for $100 more than a regular PS5. But yeah. at least I'm getting it. <laughs> so I'm sure with this, people did miss the boat at first because uh, you it had was to pre-order. It was hard to get at first, yeah. You, you had to pre-order it. It was hard to get. Uh, they sold out like immediately, and it took years for them to get up to speed with yeah. uh, with 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 meeting demand. Um, they finally only recently did. People are saying echo. What is making us echo every once yeah. in a while? Every they're saying like every so often like a, oh it's fixed. I didn't do anything. <laughs> We're not doing anything. Yeah. Maybe this is like making us. Uh, is a camera turning on? Maybe. Oh. Maybe a camera is. Uh, whatever. Just will was a few seconds. That's really weird. That is weird. I don't know, man. This is your house. It happens sometimes when the camera switches to will. Oh, it's uh, the camera. Okay. That makes sense. Uh. All right. Well, anyway. What was I talking about? Oh, so yeah, it took them a while to, to meet demand with this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they they finally did. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people missed the boat for like the first year or so. And now this is the opportunity for them yeah. to, to jump back in. It does make me wonder how many of these things they are going to produce. Because they did say it's going to be limited quality. Limited quantity. I don't know the difference. I'm sorry. So, yeah, is it only going to be like a couple thousand? Is it going to be only going to be a couple hundred? That's the question. Is it only going to be a... Oh, yeah. Did they say? No, they didn't no, they say. Didn't they just say. said uh, extremely limited quantities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think it's fun. I think it's a fun little thing. Yeah. So I'm excited to, to try it out. I, I am a little... 
uh what what, what do i say uh I feel a little bad because uh, I'm not going to make a full video on it. Right. It's, uh, like, it's just a color. Like, I'm not making a full video on a color. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will make a short. So Yeah. Think of all the TikToks you can make out of this. They're also sending a, like, a super bright LED so that it will charge it. Oh, you know, charge yeah. Charge, like, the, uh, the, 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 the glow, glow in the dark. dark. Yeah. That's but They cool. didn't have to do. Yeah. But you can just leave it out in the sun. I got so many lights. You do. <laughs> All right. Uh, any notifications? No. Let's talk about Game Pass. Uh, yes. About while you do this, I'm going to attempt to find out why you echo. Okay. So about three weeks ago, Microsoft reintroduced its new shorter Game Pass tri trial after pulling the dollar a month uh, offer back in March, but it seems that all of a sudden the company isn't feeling so generous. As we speedily approach Starfield's launch on the service, Xbox has decided to remove any sort of Game Pass trial option. As spotted by Polish site xgp.pl, players can no longer try out 14 days of Game Pass for a dollar a month or one pound a month uh, as, well, as, sorry, uh, as was the company's offer earlier uh, this month. For now, uh, anyone wanting to play Starfield via the subscription service will have to fork out the full price for at least a month. Uh, while this is disappointing and perhaps a little cheeky from Microsoft, we can't ex exactly say we were surprised by the move. A month of access to Starfield for uh, $11 or £9 is a bargain itself. Uh, never mind if players could access the game for a dollar. Having said that, you'll probably need more than a month to see everything this game is promising to offer um bethesda's pete hines recently said that he's played over 150 hours of starfield so far and there's still lots more to see even at that point uh not much to go until launch i don't see what would be making you echo that camera doesn't have audio does it it probably does but it's i don't see yeah. where that would be be in my in my little mix in my little mix area okay i mean i could go on the camera and mute it probably but yeah uh yeah usually it tells you here if there's something mm -hmm. no echo right now all right okay. I, I mean i'm gonna keep monitoring it and see if something just randomly pops up which it might right uh anyway yeah i mean this makes sense from a business perspective like of course they're gonna make it so that you have to pay full price if you want to access starfield yeah it's just uh this ruins one of the biggest arguments with uh game pass being such a good deal because yeah. i often say like with halo did they do this with halo i feel like no. they, they didn't no they didn't because i used to say halo it's a dollar to play halo and you can yeah. beat the whole game in a month and then cancel your subscription and there you go you paid a dollar well they shortened the time the time of the trial from a month to 14 days and starfield is a game that like, you get you can't play this game in 14 days no you can't even like story complete the game in 14 days i heard hundreds of hours yeah to uh story complete the game yeah so I feel like a game like this, 14 days is enough to get your feet wet, and then you'll just, you know, you'll decide whether or not you want to fork out the rest of the money. Do you have to buy a year of of Game Pass in order to beat Starfield? No, no, no. Uh, in order to even get in into it at all? No. A month of access to Starfield specifically. Wait. What are you what are you looking at? I thought how is the tiered system broken out for Game Pass? Same as it always was. Okay, but don't you have to buy a year on one of the tiers? If you want one of the tiers specifically, you have to get a whole year. You can't just buy Game a Game Pass Ultimate is only month to month. There's no Oh, it's the opposite it's of the what opposite I think. of what you're thinking of. Yeah. You can't buy a year of Game Pass Ultimate. Mm -hmm. You can only buy it, you know, a month. And I think what's now sixteen dollars. Uh, correct. Ultimate yeah. is sixteen ninety nine. So sixteen dollars a, a month every month mm -hmm. until you die. Okay. So <laughs> that's Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So still, like sixteen dollars to play the biggest game of the year is still not bad. Plus all the other games you might want to try out. And you can just get the console one or the PC one. Yeah. Yeah. If, or, depending on where you want to play your your Starfield, or you just buy the game for seventy dollars, you know, 
and not have to worry about all this nonsense. But if you're on the fence and you want to try it, too bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, you don't have to buy Starfield outright. Yeah. But but Starfield is one of those games that people might end up playing for like a whole year or more straight. Yeah. So having a subscription to a game that you're going to play for over a, a year might be a little weird to some yeah. people. I mean, Starfield definitely seems like it could be like one of somebody's forever game. Yeah. Where they just play that forever. Yeah, like like Elder Scrolls was. Yeah. I'm going to play it and I'm going to try it. Uh, and I'm glad that it's on Game Pass because I don't want to have to buy it. Yeah. But I mean, I do pay for Game Pass, so mm-hmm. I'm gonna play it through that. But uh, I don't know how I'm going to play it because uh, I want to play it on Game Pass because I already pay for Game Pass. So I guess I could play it on my computer, which mm-hmm. I'll probably do. Uh, but what handheld am I gonna do? I guess I'll download it to my ROG Ally, but yeah. I think it's probably going to run pretty bad. Yeah, I think that we heard that it's already going to be pretty hard to do it on the Steam Deck. Um, I won't be able to play it on the Steam Deck because I want to use Game Pass. I don't want to have to purchase it a second time. Yeah. Uh, so I'll see how it goes on the RG Ally. I hear the game's not that big. It's only like 140 gigs. I really? thought it was going to be a lot yeah. more than that. That comes out very, very soon. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, $11 is still a good deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, along with this news, also there's ho- there's whole new Xboxes. Technically, uh, we are excited to announce the Xbox Series X console wraps are launching this year, and pre-orders have started. We know gamers want to customize their consoles and show support for their favorite games, and we are delivering an option that's more affordable and more sustainable than purchasing a special edition or a limited edition console. With the launch of Series X console wraps, you can customize the console you already have. There are three. Stri- Three striking designs to choose from. Complete uh, your Starfield setup with a Starfield design that pairs perfectly with the recently released Starfield controller and headset. And we are also launching two camo colors to choose from, Arctic camo and mineral camo. The wraps were designed specifically for the Series X and have a custom precision fit. Every detail was taken into consideration to ensure your console performance Uh, is preserved vents are all clear and small feet were added to the bottom of the wraps to allow airflow freely uh through the console um made for made with solid core panels that are layered with high-tech fabric finishes the wraps are folded around your console and secured with a hook and loop enclosure that's velcro for you people who don't know the generic term uh the interior of the wraps are printed with silicone design uh that keep the wraps in place uh I think this is cool. It's basically just, you know, it's a little, little shirt you wrap around your, uh, it's a little jacket. <laughs> it's a nice little jacket that wraps around your LX. Uh, I like it way more than a sticker. Yeah. Because it's uh, not permanent. Yeah. So I, I was, I, I've shown you this. I'm, I was looking at like custom decals for my Xbox and I found a nice BB-8 one that I was going to get. But I think this is actually a better idea yeah because i could take it off yeah i don't like it they should make a lot more and this yeah. kind of looks star warsy it does it does kind of look star warsy i like this a lot uh it does look a little weirder than just doing a decal or something yeah. because it sticks out a little more yeah. but uh so what yeah i think that's worth having for a non-permanent solution mm-hmm. uh kevin kenson had a video uh, yes where i did see that yeah his, so that i watched that or it was a short or something yeah um they will launch in the U.S. and Canada on November 10th, uh, and pre-orders start for the camo versions at $45, and the Starfield one is available uh, October 18th uh, for $50. That's pretty late. Yeah. It's way, way late. So there is a bit of a, it's a premium for the Starfield version, mm-hmm. and I feel like, uh, I don't know, is this like 45 expensive for a a, a jacket for your xbox you think yes these stickers like the stickers you can get from like third-party sites are like the same price it's just cardboard with like a like vinyl, vinyl around it. yeah yeah so that is kind of a lot of money yeah hopefully this opens the door for third parties as well yeah i like this i i idea a lot uh because you can just change them out also 
like a new one comes out, you can just change that out too. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, the very old original Xbox 360. You can change out the faceplate. Face yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. It, and it's also along the same lines of what uh, Sony's doing with the faceplates on the PS5. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, you know, the faceplates are part of the console itself. This doesn't change the console. It just wraps around. So it. those are $55. Yeah. And people already think those are too expensive. Yeah. And this is $45 and it's just cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this I think this is kind of uh, a, a lot of money. But if you want to add some pizzazz to your Xbox, here you go. Yeah. I like the fact that my Xbox is all black and I don't want to mess with it. I mean, I like the fact that it's all black, but I feel like, you know, if there was a good design that I liked. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just because in my setup, all of the consoles are jet black. Yeah. So I mean, that's my setup right now. Mm-hmm. But like, I also keep them like hidden. So a nice pop of color would be good to see okay. them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Night Dive Studios. Yes, they got some older games coming out. One of them is one we actually care about. Okay. Uh, if you're a fan of retro shooters, today's a good news. Today's a good day. Uh, Night Dive Studios released two trailers for remasters of 2000s N64 shooter Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion and the 1995 uh, computer f- first-person shooter Star Wars Dark Forces. Digital uh, archaeologists and preservationists of older video games and treasures, Night Dive Studios has made a name for themselves as the go-to source for keeping the past alive. Having revived classics like Doom 64 and Power Slave, the studio has also shown off its remaking chops with an impressive recreation of the game System Shock. Um, Today, the trend continues uh, with the announcement of a remaster of the final installment of the original Turok trilogy and a cult hit Star Wars game. Uh, Night Dive originally kicked off its Turok remaster project in 2015 with a remaster of the original Turok Dinosaur Hunter um, for PC, Switch, and Xbox. Uh, Turok 2 Seeds of Evil uh, then came out in 2017, and now Turok 3 is set for release uh, later this year, featuring 4K resolution and up to 120 frames per second, upgraded textures, and a retuned gameplay. The trilogy is now complete. You can play that on your Lenovo Go. Uh, t- I did I, w- w- Turok 3? Yeah, don't remember Turok. It's, 3 a, at all. it's confusing because there was Turok one and two on the N sixty four, and then mm-hmm. there was Turok Rage Wars, which is technically the third game, but it was an arena shooter. Okay, so it's not the canonical third Turok game. I see that your camera audio uh-huh. shows up every once in a while. Okay, and I'm trying to turn it down, <laughs> but it keeps going away. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, also, it came out in like Turok 3 came out in 2000, which was like the last year anyone cared about the N64. Yeah. So it probably got lost in the shuffle. That's probably why you don't remember it. We had one and two on the Switch already. Yes. Yeah. Those games came out. And I'm surprised because like, those came out like fairly close together. And I just assumed they weren't going to do Turok 3 because, like I said, nobody really cared about Turok 3. They were the only uh, N64 games for a while. Yeah. Um, but the big deal, the one that I think we all, we all care about is Star Wars Dark Forces, uh, was announced from Night Dive and it is coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch and Windows. Uh, Dark Forces will be playable at 4K, 120 frames per second, uh, with completely overhauled rendering, uh, even modern gamepad support compared to classics, uh, compared to the classic Doom at the time of its release. Dark Forces manages to hit the PC FPS sweet spot for gamers in addition to being set in a well-loved sci-fi universe. It helped set the stage for future Star Wars video games in the 90s and received a well-received sequel in 97. Dark Forces does not have a Steam page yet, but Turok 3 uh, is available for wishlisting. I'm afraid to talk because then this is going to go away. Okay. Um, So yeah, so... I should specify that Dark Forces 3, it's a remaster. It's not a full remake. I know there's there's been a lot of videos people are trying to re, actually remake Dark Forces in like Unreal Engine and have like a really modern UI and stuff. This is not that. This is the game you got in 1995, but just better, <laughs> essentially. I mean, 
You know what? I was expecting it to look pretty terrible. Yeah. This looks great. Right? This looks pretty good. I feel like, you know, we've talked about, like, remasters and remakes a lot recently. Uh, I feel like this hits the sweet spot because mm-hmm. it's the game. It's it's the game. Like, they added modern control support. They made it widescreen without altering the artwork of it. Um this is what I think. Ooh, never mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Take the, it back. The cutscenes. Yeah, the cutscene looked really good for a yeah. second, but really, they they just completely redid the animation. It looks yeah. like. Or or was it just scanned at a really horrible resolution? I don't because the because I remember the original cutscenes. They were just like static pixel art, mm-hmm. and that like occasionally moved. And I think what they're going for here is like more of like a painted image yeah like it'd be one thing if it was a painted image that they then pixelated but i don't think that's what happened i think that it was always pixel art right yeah it was always just pixel art yeah i don't i don't love i don't love that yeah all right well uh i mean i'm still gonna get it (laughs) it's still dark forces so how many uh dark forces games are left to get uh how many how many uh kyle katarn games are left is what i should say i mean jedi knight uh dark forces 2 jedi knight the direct sequel to that one hmm. is probably the one that needs like the biggest update because that's only available on pc right now okay and that's like early full 3d that's like between ps1 and n64 style graphics so that could use like something of an up an updating Okay. And it had full motion video live act live action. Uh, That's scenes. true. That's so true. They can do like an HD version of that. All right. Uh, what else? Oh, we got N- Nintendo Stam. Oh, thanks for hi, coming Stan. over to this. You're at the wrong podcast. Yeah. But thank you for the subscription. And Warble Sync, thank you for the 38 months. Finally made it live. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Uh. I want a Shadows of the Empire remaster, says Griffinix. They should remake that whole game. Yeah. That's a game full on remake of, of a remake. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I can't imagine a remaster of that. Yeah. No, I wouldn't I don't think it would work. That game is not as good as you remember it being. Yeah, I know. I used to love that yeah, game, but I know I know that, that it's not. It's great. one of those games that like if you play it now, you're like, oh my memory. Yeah. <laughs> so Zombie Reaper PR. Thank you for the prime. Rogue Squadron remake. Uh, no, Rogue Squadron was good. Yeah, Rogue Squadron worked. Rogue Squadron. So Factor Five, the guys who made Rogue Squadron, they did a Rogue Squadron trilogy, like a collection for the Wii, and they were they basically ported up the two GameCube games and they fully remade Rogue Squadron One in that engine. So. Oh. And it had like full Wii, Wii, Wii remote support and it had GameCube controller support. And it was fully done. And then it was canceled at the last minute. Oh, I was going to say, because the GameCube one, Rogue Squadron 3. Yeah. That game. Well, the, the Rogue Squadron 2 launched with the GameCube. And then 3 came out years later. Well, those games emulate poorly, mm-hmm. like on Dolphin. Maybe the Wii one's better. Yeah. Oh, the Echo's back? Oh, my God. Ugh. I thought I fixed it. I, I literally thought that I was doing a good thing. I don't I don't see where uh, it could be. I'm gone for one week, and it all goes down. Echo on the two shot now? This one? This one right here. The main camera. Oh, uh, here's the cam link. Okay, let's just do this. How about that? How about them apples? Okay. Perfect. Is that ba- I mean, it's mute. Look, it's muted right yeah. there. Will's audio is still sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's triggered when, my, when the camera goes to Will. I fucking fixed it. Or so I thought. Okay. And we don't know what the source is, though. It, yeah. it, could, it could be Will's camera, but I I, I, I don't know. 
Will sounds normal now. All right. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Okay. Well, hopefully I continue to sound normal. Otherwise, too bad. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's, uh, what else can we talk about? Let's talk about Boulder's Gate on Xbox. Yeah. And while you talk about that, I'm going to see if there's a setting on the camera. Okay. Itself. Uh, I'll do the original article and then I'll go back up to the update. Uh, Larry and Sven Vic, uh, Vinick says that Baldur's Gate 3 will come to Xbox this year, having sat down with Phil Spencer at GameCom to hash out a few details. The recent RPG has been soaring success on PC when it launched earlier this month. It's set to come to PS5 on September 6th. However... Xbox has been notably absent for, uh, from the release schedule thus far with split screen gameplay on Series S being the main sticking point. But now the sticking point has become unstuck with the developer dropping the feature from the Series S console. This is even this is even though Larian once called it a must. Super happy to confirm that after meeting with Phil Spencer yesterday, we found a solution that allows us to bring Baldur's Gate 3 to Xbox later this year, something we've been working towards for quite some time. Uh, Vinick said on Twitter, I am not calling it X. Uh, mm -hmm. All improvements will be there. All improvements will be there with split screen co-op on Series X. Series S will not feature split screen co-op, but will, inclu will include cross-save progression between Steam and Xbox Series. Uh, we still don't have a release date for Baldur's Gate 3 on Xbox yet, uh, but we are one step closer to seeing that when we were this morning. Uh, update. Larian and Xbox still hope to add split screen to the Series S version of Baldur's Gate 3. In a post over the weekend, Xbox said it is working with Larian and exploring ways to bring split screen to Series S. If and when the solution is found, this feature will be then be added uh, to Baldur's Gate 3 post-launch. This follows the welcome announcement that Baldur's Gate 3 will be releasing on Xbox this year. Last week, Larry, uh, yeah, I said that already. Is this the first time we're losing a feature on Series S? I believe so. Because uh, we've thought, yeah, I know it's been brought up before that like developers, they really don't like the Series S because they have to match the Series X in terms of like parity, mm -hmm. like features and stuff. Um, but since the Series S is so much more underpowered, it's harder to hit good stability on it. Uh, and this was the, f this was like the biggest one to like hit that roadblock. Uh, Larian has been very open about like, we can't get this thing to run on series S properly. And, uh, they worked, they worked out a deal with Microsoft where they found a way to, to get it to work. And that required dropping split screen. I didn't realize it wasn't on Xbox. Yeah, it was, it's not on uh PlayStation yet either. Oh, I it, had no idea. Well, it's coming to PlayStation in, in September, in September 6th. But it's not coming to Xbox at all until they, you know, figure this out. So they were just straight up like, nah, we're, yeah, we're, we're we good on Xbox. Yeah, we can't do it because of the it. Series S. That's crazy. Yeah. Because we were skeptical that uh, uh, developers had issues with the Series S. Yeah. And, but now here's Microsoft being like, no, 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 we want to help. Let yeah, us help. Like the, and you know, Baldur's Gate 3 has turned into the biggest game of the year. Mm. So you bet your ass Microsoft's like, we got to get this game on our system. I hear it runs very bad on Steam Deck. Like, like yeah. the frame rate's pretty low. Uh, even though it says, I think it has a great on deck rating, but uh, in in a lot of areas the frame rate you gotta dips like really, really low, really like lower all your settings. Uh, yeah, but I think even still, you're gonna have like 15 frames a second in some areas. Yeah. But to be fair, it's a turn based game, so like, right? I mean, low frame rate. I mean, who cares yeah. really? I mean, so they did say that they're gonna work on getting a uh, split screen release for the Series S post launch. So they'll patch it in at some point. But I mean, that still raises the question. Are we now at a point where Microsoft is okay with developers releasing a lesser version of a game just so it can get on both series S and X? Are they okay with like dropping features from the S version? If it means getting it on Xbox at all, it, we will hit a time when uh, the series S is going to start losing game, whole games. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Uh, Eric says verified doesn't mean it runs well. It just means that the text isn't bad, and the launcher isn't in the way and stuff like that. Not anything to do with graphics or and frame rate. Mm -hmm. Um. It great on deck should mean it is it is great playing it. Mean, it yeah, there, mean you know? that. Yeah, like uh, 
I understand that th- some things lose the rating if they don't if the if the text is too small, which makes a little bit of sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, if like the button legends are are, are wrong or, or or something like that, if, if if something is a little confusing on the deck versus playing it on a keyboard and mouse on a PC, yeah, I understand why it, it wouldn't be great on deck. Um, but if the frame rate is like super low, it should probably not be great on, on, on deck. Yeah. I think that Baldur's Gate three is probably mostly fine on deck. There's just some areas where the frame rate uh, becomes, uh, uh, horrible. Great should be 45 to 60. No, great is 30. (laughs) <laughs> all right it's a fucking handheld all right yeah. being able to get 30 on a triple a pc game on a little tiny handheld is pretty awesome yeah king wizard said could you uh, i just got here could you start over yeah sure yeah okay sure bro hi right, guys welcome back hey welcome hey welcome for the first time we're here Time to time to redo all of the technical difficulties that yeah. we've been having. Make sure you echo when you when you talk. All right. Uh, all right. Well, where are we? Who are you? Uh, uh, Phil Spencer would love to keep 360 games from being lost as a shutdown looms. Uh, Xbox boss Phil Spencer said the team at Xbox would love to find solutions in order to save the 220 non-backwards compatible games set to become unavailable for purchase once the Xbox 360 digital storefront shuts down next year. In a wide-ranging Eurogamer interview with Spencer at Gamescom, the CEO of Microsoft Gaming Division uh, discusses the recent announcement that the 360 storefront uh, shut down and said that he has a list of non-backwards compatible games set to be lost in the shuffle, staple to his forehead. Um, (laughs) He said that games preservation is critical to Team Xbox and wants to ensure that those games can remain playable in some form. That might simply mean those games are already available on PC, which he says is the best ecosystem for games preservation because it's not tied to an old piece of uh, hardware. That's one thing about that. Yeah, that's one thing because it doesn't necessarily mean uh, you need to be able to play it on the existing hardware that you had uh, for 15 years. But preservation is front and center uh, when all these decisions are made, uh, Spencer said. For games that are not available on PC, Spencer said that it was important to give players a year's notice on the Xbox 360 storefront shutdown so they can purchase those titles. The 360 store will go offline in July 29th of next year, though it doesn't it doesn't sound like there is any concrete plan. Spencer did mention some solution that might be found in the next year to keep those non-back compact games available. And just know that the list of 220 games is something that we see and we love to find solutions for those games to continue to play. Spencer said, uh, as for why Microsoft has decided to shut down the storefront, Spencer said it came down to the lifespan of the hardware and the number of users actually still playing and buying games on the 360. It's a pretty small community, Spencer said. The community of buyers is very, very small. So as the back end, which is tied to the hardware roughly, starts to kind of bring down just from a sustainable sustainability standpoint uh and almost all the players have moved on we're like okay we can focus our efforts on where the players are and where they can buy many of the games set to become unavailable for purchase once the 360 store goes offline are digital only games that were part of what was once called xbox live arcade some of those games like super giant bastion have been re-released on more modern xbox hardware many haven't like bionic commando rearmed and have Oh, sorry. Many, many that have not, like Bionic Commando Rearmed, have been released on other platforms like PC. Video Game Chronicle has a full list of titles affected by the store shutdown. Uh, game content uh, already, per- game content purchased on 360 will still be available to play and replay. Uh, still be able to play and re-download, and backwards compatible titles will still be available for purchase on Xbox One and Series X and S. Uh. I kind of want to see this full list of games that they have here. So they keep saying 220 non-backwards compatible games. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they get that number from. Because by my estimation, 30% of the Xbox 360 library is backwards compatible. And so that leaves... What's that? That leaves 70% that isn't backwards compatible. Well, this is digital only, right? Yeah, this is a full list of digital-only Xbox 360 games set to disappear. Okay. Because, yeah. 
because 70 percent of the xbox 360 library is a lot more than 220 there were like over a thousand games released yeah i'm sure a majority of those are physical right but yeah. there, are, there are a lot of physical games that are not backwards compatible on xbox right. one right you know arkham asylum and arkham city you can buy them but the versions you bought on the 360 are not playable you know the tony hawk games are not playable on xbox one um you know i'm sure i'm leaving something out here or there yeah those should be available digitally in some way as well available digitally in some way or at the very least you should be able to play them on your xbox one or yeah if you you put the disc in i think this has a lot to do with how microsoft did backwards compatibility because it's it was on a per game basis they basically re-licensed all the games Mm -hmm. rather than just allowing you to carry them over yeah, I wish it was as simple as just putting the disc in and then it runs, but yeah. uh, the architecture on the 360 is so different, I guess. Uh, yeah. But I feel like there should just be a disclaimer sometimes. Like, this game might run like shit. Yeah. Like, just play that in the beginning. If the game's not, like, optimized, like, backwards compatible, like, officially optimized, yeah. just give me a disclaimer that's like, this game might run like shit. There's some weird shit that might go on because the architecture is different. Yeah. proceed with caution yeah. and then like maybe you'll play a game like uh i mean the only example that comes to mind is dark souls on the playstation 3 mm-hmm. sometimes the shield is like not visible like yeah. weird shit like that might happen but like yeah. uh let it like i still want to play it i still want to yeah. do it you know i, I want to be able to at least give it to me in some capacity mm-hmm. Basically, what I'm saying is, give me a straight up Xbox 360 emulator. That's on, what I was, on the was about to say. Like, if they were to le- release a standalone 360 emulator mm. on the console, their own version, yeah. yeah, would that violate any like agreements with third party publishers? It would. Ju- in my brain, it's just specifically for when you put a disc in, right? So what? I don't know what the agreements would look like, but you would then be allowing that game that somebody purchased over 10 years ago to run on a different piece of hardware. I don't know if that's... Because there are some backwards compatible Xbox 360 games that are not available digitally Mm -hmm. that you can only play via disc. Like I know Arkham Origins, Deus Ex, uh, Doom 3. If you have the disc, you can play it, but you can't buy it on the storefront. I'm sure the licensing agreements have in I'm sure the licensing agreements in some way say like if Xbox console period like yeah. if like if we release a new piece of hardware in the future maybe your disc will run on that you know yeah. like I don't think they would limit themselves by saying like only Xbox 360 you know yeah so so anyway uh one of the games on here that stood out to me is Fez Mm. because that guy is not gonna report that anymore. i mean it's been re-released i think it's on switch oh yeah it is yeah so never mind mighty number nine what a loss wait (laughs) there is an xbox one version of mighty number nine yeah i don't like this list (laughs) digital only xbox 360 game set to disappear like the xbox 360 version though yeah child of light yeah a lot of these games but like Co- if you Call of Duty Classic, that that's a big one. That's Call of Duty One. That's the original Call of Duty. And if that's not playable on Xbox One or Series X, you know you're not you're losing the original Call of Duty. Yeah, game. but that's a first of all, play that on PC. <laughs> Second of all, that's an Xbox game. No, Call, this is Call of Duty Classic. Yeah, for the Xbox 360. Yeah. That's yeah. a port of the original Call of Duty for PC. It, that was not that was never released on console oh, before. Okay. Okay. Cause the the launch Call of Duty was Call of Duty 2. Yes. And that was great. That was yeah. a great game. I like that game. Uh okay. That that that's uh there you go. Yeah. Do they have Marvel vs. Capcom on this list? Because that... No, yeah, that's don't. another one. Well, that they pulled. Yeah, they pulled that already. Well, Capcom that, pulled that. Yeah, yeah, that was pulled a while ago. All right. So what's next? More, more from Phil Spencer. Uh, there this won't. This guy be a- just keeps on yeah. yapping. 
Uh, Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer has reiterated that the company has no plans at this time to release a mid-gen console before the next big Xbox system comes out. Speaking to Eurogamer, Spencer said that he understands why people are asking this, in part because there is a belief among some people that every game should run at 4K60, no questions asked, and that the current hardware can't deliver this. But the problem, uh, Spencer said, is that too much... Too many hardware refreshes can create issues for developers. Not only that, but multiple console refreshes before the next big step uh, makes a platform like Xbox more akin to a PC, and Spencer does not want to go down that route. Uh, And it starts to feel a lot more like PC, which is clearly a good ecosystem that's healthy, but then I'm like, well, okay, what's the difference between a PC and a console if, if we're in this mode of every two years a new GPU comes out or a new CPU? Uh, there's just a bunch of, and there's just a bunch of things he says. He actually says there's just a bunch <laughs> of things. Uh, I, I like when they have to write down what somebody's saying in an interview yeah. because, like, people talk a certain way that yeah. they wouldn't necessarily write down and in, in, into words. If we get into a console, if we get into a console world where every two years we now have three or four closed ecosystems that are upgrading their hardware every two years, I'm going to wonder how is that helping creators or players, uh, Spencer adds. Uh, To me, it feels like we're creating a ton of complexity for creators and players in something that used to be very simple. And maybe there's another model for us. Spencer went on to say that he wonders if the strict definition of a console generation as it's known today will continue to be relevant in the future. He says systems like the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X aren't exactly a full step up, but still represent gains over uh, previous hardware iterations. Take the PC, for example, he says. Um, We don't really talk about the latest AMD or NVIDIA GPUs as part of a generation. We see it as more of a continuous, as more of a continuation than a a step function. Um, He goes on to say, and there are some advantages to step function. I get it. Uh, There is also a ton of advantages to being more continuous in terms of compatibility, game preservation, and the and an openness of those platforms. So I'm curious how that plays out. So so, so Phil Spencer is doubling down on the idea that uh, the Xbox Series X is not like the the guy you gotta play the Xbox games on. He's doubling down on being like the. It's not about the console. It's about the right. games. Uh, Microsoft will continue to make more Xbox consoles in the future, but will they represent the step function of, for example, the shift from Xbox 360 to Xbox One or from Xbox One to Xbox Series X and S? Spencer says he doesn't know. I wonder, I'm wondering if this notion of step function is just going to hold in this con- hold in the console or, if it's, or is it going to be more continuous, he said. Spencer is not saying anything very surprising here. When the Xbox Series X and S was announced, uh, Spencer made it clear that the system generation was simply called Xbox and that Series X and S denoted the specific models, not unlike what Apple does with its iPhone line. The next uh, hardware launch for Microsoft is the one terabyte Series S that comes in black. I don't like step function. Yeah, I hate I that this term. Is a stupid I, that term. was confusing me every single time yeah, I was reading it. That's, that's dumb. dumb. Mid console refresh is a better. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to see a mid console refresh. I thought those were dumb. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't need that at all. But we. Uh, and I and I get what he's saying. Yeah. I mean. I mean, I want to say that. Uh, I want to say that developers are not utilizing the full power of the consoles that we currently have, but then the Series S exists, yeah. <laughs> and that seems to be a limiting factor for for some people. Um, Will Echo and Bob Echo? <sighs> I don't know. I I'm I'm at a complete loss for where this Echo could be coming from. Bob and Will Echo now. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I got I got one last trick up my sleeve. Okay. You do that trick. Should I start? Reading? Yeah, do whatever you want. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Wolfman Podcast. In stereo, apparently. Um, we always record in stereo. Let's read the next article. 
The Nintendo Switch has surpassed the Wii's lifetime sales in the U.S. The Nintendo Switch has just achieved another sales milestone. Although worldwide hardware sales of the hybrid system surpassed the Wii a long time ago, uh, there's been an update in the only country that matters, America. Uh, according to new data from uh, Circana, previously the NPD, uh, I didn't know they changed their name. That's news to me. Uh, the U.S. lifetime sales of the Switch hardware have finally overtaken the, the Wii. After six years on the market, the hybrid system achieved this feat on July 2023. No exact sales data were provided, but IGN notes that 49 million consoles were sold in the Americas. GameIndustry.biz further mentions that the Wii's lifetime sales now trail the Xbox 360 by less than 1 million units in the U.S., uh, Nintendo's latest system is also a few 5 million away from the PlayStation 2 in the same market. The Switch's ongoing success is credited to its strong library of first-party games. In 2023, the system sales have been assisted by the launch of Tears of the Kingdom, uh, with existing owners uh, also being treated to games like Metroid Prime Remastered and Pikmin 4. And uh, they have more games like Super Mario Bros. Wonder due out this year. Nintendo's official website says that the Switch has now sold more than 129 million units as of June 30th, uh, while the Wii sales cap at 109 million units. So, yeah. Uh, that's a lot of Switches. People just keep buying Switches. Everyone's like, oh, the Switch 2 is coming out yesterday. It's going to be 4K and it's going to have all these other fancy bells and whistles and in the real world everyone's like nah man I'm buy a switch so we keep saying this but uh usually around this time when a console's winding down they get a little boost in sales from uh from putting the console on sale yeah and nintendo has not done that so they've yeah. made all of these sales without having any substantial price decreases yeah which is crazy mm-hmm uh, but I'd imagine this holiday, maybe we'll see a little bit. Maybe we'll try to squeeze out some more. I don't know. At this rate, I I wouldn't be surprised if they just put out that same stupid Mario Kart bundle they've been doing. You know? But make that $50 cheaper. That would make sense. Yeah. But I I wouldn't be surprised if they don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I wouldn't be surprised either. So, <coughs> yeah, I think that the Switch is on track to be the best-selling console of all time but they need to make a price decrease if they want to beat out yeah. uh, the playstation 2 mm -hmm. in the next year uh, well i mean even or at, two or even the at the rate years. they're going they could beat out the playstation 2 even when the next uh, switch comes out mm -hmm. you know if they keep selling rate? it yeah uh Proven Potato says, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I feel like at some point, Will and Jackson will get into a physical altercation and Will will absolutely dominate. <laughs> Hope I'm wrong. I feel like I've challenged him to a fight before on this show. <laughs> that still stands. Uh, how many gift subs for us to get a boxing match between uh, Jackson and Will? Nah, you know me. I like my pro wrestling, so we're going to do an old style ECW street fight. Okay. Uh, people in the chat are saying the audio issue might be the scene switching. I'll have to do a deep dive after we uh, stop. Yeah. Hopefully it's not the interface because I like this interface. Everything sounds so nice. Yeah, I can't believe I missed the new interface. You missed the new yeah. interface. Did you know that Zoom, who made our own interface, is a Long Island company? No. Their headquarters is... Wait, yes. I did know that. Their headquarters is off the LIE. Yes, like, I did know that. Going east, yeah. I've seen it before. It blew my mind. Well, every time I drive past them now, I'm going to say, you're a Brogzog. <laughs> <laughs> no, that recorder is really good for like doing a podcast like away from a studio because it's like a portable little thing. Yeah, I was going to say, like if you're like not doing a live show, yeah. but like recording your buddies talking about, you know, how the Mets are doing. Yeah. Yeah. I also think we just used it so much it got shitty after a while because yeah. we, we ran that thing to the ground. Mm -hmm. We've had so many different interfaces in the, in the history of, of this channel. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Let's do the rest. We only yes. have a few more. Yes. Uh, this is an interesting thing that I think could be worth a discussion. 
Uh, Sonic Superstars team doesn't think that pixel art will be viable in 10 years. And they're wrong. <laughs> Sonic Superstars is an exciting return to the Bluebirds 2D, 2D Origins, but its new art style exists because the developers don't think the classic pixel art approach will be viable in the future. Speaking to Games Radar Plus at Gamescom, uh, Sonic Team Head and Sonic Superstars producer Takeshi Izuka, Izuki uh, discussed via a translator the importance of having both 2D Sonic games like Superstars and 3D titles like Sonic Frontiers. When we talk about the brand, we definitely need to have a modern 3D Sonic game, um, Izuka said. Uh, we also feel the need to have a classic 2D game. Those are our fundamental pillars that we have to have. Uh, we are expanding into movies and TV, but we still need to have both 3D and a 2D lineup uh, in our gaming audience. Uh, last year, we released Sonic Frontiers, and what Sonic Frontiers was doing is taking an open zone concept to cement that 3D Sonic gameplay as something we can build on for the next 10 to 20 years to continue bringing new gameplay experiences to players. It was a, uh, really the evolution of where the 3D Sonic space was going, and we feel very proud of what the team was able to deliver. However, while Frontiers is being seen as a platform for the next two decades of 3D Sonic, Superstars has a slightly different role to play. Izuka described the game as an evolution of the 2D style of Sonic gameplay, uh, saying that we look at the pixel art, it's great, but when we think about 10 to 20 years in the future, we don't think it's going to be a viable art style or presentation for our players. And in order to advance and really step things up, we think we did want to make sure that we're presenting something that 10 to 20 years down the road, we're still evolving and creating new content for. Izuka's comments are certainly interesting. Critical consensus isn't always a perfect measure of success, but it's worth noting that Sonic Frontier's Metacritic score ranges from 61 to 55%. Uh, by contrast, Sonic 61 Mania, to 75. 61 to 75 percent. Yeah, sorry. Sonic Mania, made in the original game's pixel art style, boasts a score in the mid-80s, and Sonic Mania Plus is the best reviewed game in Sonic's entire series. Elsewhere, pixel art games continue to thrive in the indie space, uh, and several other high-profile games from this year, including Octopath Traveler 2 and the recently released Sea of Stars, make significant use of the art style. Izuka's comments seem to extend specifically to the Sonic fandom, uh, that may skew younger than the JRPG community, but I'd be surprised to see pixel art going away in the short term. So I think that he is uh, making the wrong argument. I, th I think that what he's... Like, I understand why Sonic Superstars doesn't have pixel art. Mm -hmm. And it's not because... In my brain, it's not because he wants the game to be... Rec like good for the next 10 to 20 years like he wants the game to still be like he he wants to establish a type that can be evolved over the next 10 to 20 yeah. years that's that's fine like yeah. like like i look at sonic superstars and i think it is in a different realm than sonic mania right sonic mania is pixel art it's supposed to be right. like the sequel to sonic 3 or mm -hmm. you know and I think that Sonic Superstars is like, you know, a, a modern take on that. I yeah. also think there's room for like a Sonic game that would be like, you know, uh, 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 side scrolling, but in a 3D space, you know, yeah. like, like it, it, it all make, makes sense to me. But saying that uh, pixel art isn't going to be viable in 10 to 20 years doesn't make any sense. It's just an art. It's an art style. I. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be viable, mm -hmm. but I can sort of see the argument that it's not going to be as prevalent as it is now. Because if you think about it, the reason why games, you know, were started to bring back the pixel art style is because the people who were making the games grew up with the pixel art style. So they knew that style, they loved that style, they wanted mm -hmm. to recreate it in the games they were making. Kids nowadays don't have the same nostalgia for it right so when they start making games they're going to do it you know in the style that they are used to fully rendered 3d or uh if they're doing a 2d game you know full-on animation like games like super meat boy or dead cells or uh you know games like that yeah we're seeing now we, we've seen a, a 
couple of different uh eras get get re revitalized yeah. and like as we get older the the we're, we're watching the people who grow up with certain things like you said pixel art we're getting uh uh like gamecube style platformers and stuff and yeah. then we're seeing like ps1 style games and like you know stuff like that um i think that pixel art will be around in the same way that like black and white movies i was gonna around. bring up the black and white yeah. Yeah. movie argument because like when color hit people were still making black and white films mm -hmm. for a while and then color became prevalent and nowadays if a black and white film comes out it's like it's like niche or it's yeah. like specific to a point it's just it's gonna be the same thing with pixel art games yeah yeah there'll, there'll be a time and a place for it and and it, it's a style it's yeah. a style of 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 game. yeah anyway uh what's going on in chat uh Oh, you just talk. Yeah, I still don't know what happens if one of the characters goes off screen during the multiplayer. I I didn't read the article, but I saw a headline that said Sonic front, uh, Sonic Superstars multiplayer is great. So I maybe somebody played it. Yeah, they they were hands on at Gamescom. Oh wait, so I think I know someone who who might have played it. I could just ask. <laughs> it's a button press. To bring them back? Tweakers had a hands-on. What is a button press? What do you do? What's the, what's the button do? Tweakers.net had a hands-on Sonic Superstars. Apparently, if your character gets out of range, you can get back into range with a simple button press. Like a bubble. In in Mario... Okay. Super Mario Brothers, right? So you can basically... Okay, so... So how does it determine? So who's controlling the camera? Just whoever's the I furthest, know, I guess. Uh, while I barreled towards the objective, my teammate was able to travel elsewhere on the grid to collect rings to ensure that at least one of us could withstand hits from Eggman's robots. Once I reached the grid's end and could jump to solid ground, Superstar's camera followed me, and my teammate was able to warp themselves to my position so we could proceed. Okay. Uh. Sir Newt Muscat in the chat says uh, the one in the front, the person in the front has the focus. Okay. Okay. So so the way it works in in uh Mario games, the way the camera follows you, yeah, is when you hit a I think uh around here on the screen, the two thirds mark, uh Mario the camera follows Mario and he will always stand in this two thirds mark. I okay. can't put my hand there. Uh if you fall below the one third mark then the camera stops or something like that. Um, so I guess when you hit this two thirds mark, the camera will follow that person, I guess. Anyway, uh, I'm interested to see how that will physically yeah, play. That'll be will I physically ever play it multiplayer because they don't have <laughs> online multiplayer? Yeah, I don't know. All right, last one. Elon Musk was booed. Yeah. Boo. I saw this. This was funny. Elon Musk was booed by the crowd when his attendance on the final day of the Valorant 2023 tournament uh, was highlighted at in the broadcast. It Look, Valorant's a video game. We talk about video games on this podcast. This is news. And I he, play Valorant yes. almost every night. Yes. So uh, this is relevant. In a clip of the stream uh, shared by J Jake Lucky, Musk's attendance in the stadium was revealed only to be met with a ruckus booze from the crowd. Where's that coming from? That can't be from in here. Surely one of the streamers broadcasters asked, um, is this a bigger reaction than professional Valorant player uh, Tizen got? The other replied, uh, while the feed cut back to the match between uh, Canada-based Evil Geniuses and the Singaporean team of Paper Rex, the crowd wasn't finished with Musk. Focus is back on the game now. One of the broadcasters erroneously declared before the crowd broke into a chant of bring back Twitter. That is awesome. That is great. Uh, also of note, Ben Affleck and his children were there. Uh, yeah, apparently. I saw something where he said like he was like shooting out support because they nerfed one of the characters. He was? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, 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 so I was watching. Uh, I was watching the tournament live yeah uh i was watching Tarek, who is a streamer and he was i guess he was it was it's a very weird setup so streamers now will restream like you know how we used to do the game awards yeah yeah people do that with the valorant tournament but those restreams become 
so popular that they're almost more popular than the mainstream. Yeah. Tarek, I think, had the same amount of viewers as the main Valorant stream. So he yeah. had almost 200,000 viewers. And he was at the tournament streaming from the tournament. Yeah. Uh, and then some kids came on the stream mm -hmm. and talked for a little bit and then left. And Tarek was like, you guys aren't going to believe this. <laughs> that was some really famous guy's kids. I don't know if I could say it. It was fucking Ben Affleck's yeah. kids. They just j jumped on the stream. Yeah. And, and I, I'm pretty sure one of them said, yeah, I don't really play Valorant. I just like watching the streamers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Affleck took his son to the event where the two of them encountered Shannon Williams, who provides the voice for Jet. When Affleck's son told Williams that his dad could, uh, could be a Jet main, Ben interjected, yeah, but they they nerfed jet so that's a problem <laughs> oh my god i didn't know that was the interaction so there you go batman knows what nerfing a character means. that's definitely his son told him yeah. that and he was just like i don't know what this means i'm just gonna say what my son said and i bet people think it's funny anyway back to sonic uh this is what the multiplayer looks like uh i guess when well this is a guy talking yes. about it uh so this is what this i guess the screen looks like so yeah. it looks like it's following amy because she's on that two-thirds mark right and then tails that doesn't really show much that's special nah, that yeah. doesn't show much of anything it looked like tails was ahead for a hot second uh-huh oh wait this whole section is the co-op no well, that's yeah there we go oh my god get off the screen <laughs> get off the screen tweakers <laughs> amy's in the front Are we going to see Knuckles get in the front? No, we're not. Okay. okay. Whatever. More, more research is needed. Yeah. The guy's explaining it. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to be able to fucking understand it. It's in Dutch. <laughs> I think IGN had a video on it. Donald farted. Thank you for the 12 months. Thank you. One whole year of this shit, he says. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to talk to you people. Yes, but first, we always start with people who have comments over on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Yes. Uh, where is it? Right here. Uh, Metatron says, how much Will contributes to the chemistry is wild. He needs a raise. Thank no. you. I wouldn't. I wouldn't nope. I, yeah, I submit for one. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just submit for a sick day, and he still made me come into work. I, I sent him the podcast when, <laughs> when when it was done. I sent him the MP3. Uh, Rodrigo, thank you. Uh, Rodrigo says, I completely understand why Will didn't show up, but he ruined my whole week. <laughs> uh, uh, George MCF says, I don't think the Loki Mini or Zero have started shipping yet. They said they would start shipping the Zero in July, but obviously that hasn't happened yet, so I don't know what Ein's doing with shipping. I don't know either. Uh, I'm just going by what I see other YouTubers get, and I know that's probably bad because I... Well, okay, so... My understanding is that these other YouTubers also bought their own. I don't think that they're getting units. I, I think that most of them are not getting units from Ein themselves. But the Loki Max is the one that they all did videos on. And I didn't want to buy that because that's a lot of money. Uh, so I, 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 I guess you're right. I guess they didn't ship the 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 Mini or the Zero. E-Tray uh, says, it's sad that the Xbox 360 store is closing, but I'm very glad you can still purchase all of the backwards compatible titles on current Xbox consoles. I think this warrants some exploration into titles that are not backwards compatible to see if there are any gems that need to be snatched up before closing. Yeah. Yeah, because we didn't even talk about all the original Xbox games that you can't play right now on Xbox One and Series. Yeah, yeah there's just a lot to pour through if yeah. we're going to go through that. the xbox 360 can play i think half of the original xbox library just like out the gate and it didn't require like getting like piecemeal one game at a time addition to a library or whatnot it just did it mm -hmm. so i don't know why they can't like at least do that for the original xbox uh caleb fox says because ubisoft has some partnership with amazon luna 
it would be insane if Ubisoft got the streaming rights to Activision Blizzard games. They did get that. Yes. That is already established. Yeah. So once this goes through, Ubisoft is going to be having their hand in this weird cookie jar. Yeah. So the Echo came back for a hot second. What did the camera change at all? It uh, we didn't. I didn't change scenes at all. So, uh, all right. Uh, that's it from last week. Yes. Uh, Fred messaged me and said everybody is just talking about how much they miss Will. Oh. I want to also say that last week, best performing podcast in the past <laughs> ten podcasts. So. I mean, really, are we going by what you people say? Or are we going by the numbers here? All right. It's because I named the title of the podcast like three new consoles came out. It has nothing to do yeah. with the fact that you, you worked here. <laughs> it was only on Will's mic. Oh, okay. How do you how do you know that? That it was only on Will's mic. That's it's because he was talking. So do I have to keep talking? Is it happening right now, right this very second that my mouth is moving? Okay. Like, you need to tell me, is it happening right now? Right now. Right now. Come on, guys. I know there's a delay between when I'm talking and when you guys get it, but you you got to hurry up. Pick up the pace here. They're all saying no. Okay. It was just Will that was echoing? No, we heard it from both of your... It sounds like it's a room mic. That's why I think it's a camera. Yeah. I... I, 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 I I don't know. Uh, you've been hacked like wood. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And all he can do is, is make it echo. All right. Now we're in the chat, I guess. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys doing? Do you feel like if there isn't a new Mario that the next Nintendo console will be like the Wii U in adoption? Like in, in the amount that people purchase it? No. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah. Then, no, I don't think so. I mean, it will it will need a very strong launch title. I don't mm-hmm. think it will ever be as bad as the Wii U. No. No, I think, I mean, I don't know if they would launch it with, if they launched it with Metroid Prime 4, that could be their killer app, you know, because the thing is we just got a Zelda game Mm -hmm. and we just, we're getting a new Mario game. So if the Switch is, Switch 2 is allegedly coming out next year, what would they have to launch it with? We just got a Mario game. We just got a Zelda game. A 3D Mario game. You think so? I think that they can't launch, I don't think. I think Metroid Prime 4 is a huge title. I don't think it's... It's going to be a system seller? No, I think that... I don't think Metroid's a system seller. I right. think that Metroid Prime 4 is big for a Metroid game, you know? Yeah. Um, I think Mario and Zelda is basically all that they could do with a system or seller. Or Mario Kart 9. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, Mario, yeah, Mario Kart would mm. be wild. Uh, it's really too early to say, but thoughts on Wonder having in-game purchases? That's what? the only way to talk about. I didn't. I didn't hear about this. I would have put that in the. You should look at my Twitter. Uh, it's going to have in-game purchases. I imagine it's just the DLC, right? But the ESRB rated it, and they, and it said that there's in-app purchases. Interesting. I I think that it's just DLC, but. I don't know what the DLC could be. I don't know what yeah. it could look like. Maybe levels, I, I, maybe levels or, may, or maybe it could be a character. I yeah. Or it could be as simple as like costumes. Um, do you guys think there might be wraps for the Series S? Uh, that would be cool, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't think... Because the Series S is meant to be laid flat. Mm. So I don't know if they would come out with like a a wrap for that maybe like not even like a cover i mean you can't stand it up yeah it, it seems like this was clearly designed for the x the wrap the s does have a lot of uh thermal holes though it's got yeah. a, all sides has has a uh, thermal holes and mm-hmm. then the series x only has the top and the bottom yeah do you think the new 2D Mario games would follow the same style as Mario Wonder for future games since the older games were less interesting due to repetition? I think that they've learned from the new Super Mario Bros. games mm-hmm. and they are going to follow a similar formula that the 3D Mario games follow, which is 
everyone is different. Yeah. That's what I think. I think, you know, everyone is different and you don't get them as often, you know, because mm-hmm. they, they were coming out with like new Super Mario Brothers left, right and center at a, at a point. Yeah. So putting some distance between them, I think, you know, will create, you know, a want for a new version of it. I heal boomers says, do you think a PS5 Pro is coming? No. I'm going to say no. I think yeah. that this Slim is the one yeah. that everybody thought was going to be a Pro. I think that that this mm-hmm. is it. And did I say this already? I'm now skeptical that the disk drives are removable. Did I say that? You said it. I think you said it last week. Yeah. Why do you think why do you think they're your skeptic? Because like, why do we think it is removable? Removable. There's been talk. Yeah. There's been like just random talk about like a, a separate drive that you can get mm-hmm. for like either the discless PS5 or even the Series S uh, to play games you have a disc for. Uh, and because we saw the slits in the the leaked model of the PS5 Slim, people think that's a remove like for the removable disc drive. People only think that's because of the removable disc drive because there was a rumor that it was going to right. have one anyway. Uh, I don't think it looks like a disc drive that could be easily removable. And uh, I don't. I think that's maybe something they were thinking about, but it doesn't necessarily mean something that we're right. going to end up getting. How much smaller is the Slim compared to the PS5? I don't know, but the guy was ha- was manhandling it with one yeah. hand, and that's really hard to do with the PS5, so... Uh, do you think we will get Super Mario Maker 3? I think it will be Super Mario Maker 3D. That would be nuts. Yeah, but that's not until the next yeah. console for sure. Uh, what else? Did you all see that there was a tweet saying Nintendo had the new console at Gamescom, but only people that had to sign a heavy NDA got access? I did not see that. I did not see that. But I did see that there were a lot of uh, journalists and influencers at the Nintendo store like a week ago. Really? Yeah. But I think that's for Wonder. I think that's for Super Mario Wonder. Yeah. People were thinking that's for the new console, but I I think it's for Super Mario Wonder. Yeah. Do y'all smoke weed? No. Nah. Sorry, bro. Uh. Uh, do you think the slim will be better optimized to run with the portable? No, no, not at all. People are saying that it will have the, uh, audio, the, the proprietary wireless audio built in, but I, I, first of all, don't think it's gonna, uh, and there's not much they could add to it to make it better optimized for the uh, for the handheld. Yeah, maybe a direct connection, but with... that would be another proprietary. Yeah, signal. they would have to yeah. do a proprietary signal that circumvents the the router. You got to do a proprietary signal for your stupid headphones. You got to do a proprietary yeah. signal for your yo know, tablet. You have to do Bluetooth for your controller. You got to do Wi-Fi so for I, your internet. It's, it's already four signals coming out of your, your box. I will say that the Wii U's gamepad had a proprietary signal, but right. that was to make it, you know, as fast as, as yeah. possible. And that only gave you like a what? Like 25, 25 range. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they would have to do, they would have to basically make the PS5 slim like a router. Yeah. And I, I don't, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I saw someone ask, are you going to stream the Super Mario Wonder? Direct? No. No, I'm not. At 1 o'clock on Thursday, we will have a live Nintendo podcast, though. So there we will go. talk about it then. I'm not even going to watch. I'll watch it like right before we go live, I guess. Are we of you beta testing the new Retro Tink 4K? No, but I no. want it. I definitely want yeah, it. Yeah, that looks like the one to get. It is $1,000, though. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. But I do want it. Yeah. That is worth making a video on, I think. Have either, have either of you modded a PlayStation Classic? No, I heard it's pretty easy, though. Yeah. I don't even know anyone who got a PlayStation Classic. Didn't we make... Did we not make a video on it? No, we didn't get a PlayStation Classic. I remember you playing... Oh, it was PlayStation 2 through the OSSC. Yeah. Um... Somebody asked if I, I missed it. Somebody asked if I 
Roadman Rome. Have you been playing Bomb Rush uh, Cyberpunk recently? I played last night. How is it? It's very good. Nice. It is just Jet Grind Radio. So nice. like <laughs> it feels like a Dreamcast game. Good. But it's it's good, good in, in that way. Uh, they say set aside $1,000 and be happy when it's not. That's what they say about the retro thing. Okay. Scribe of Wormwood, thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you. I'm moving apartments. Y'all want to help? Cheap pizza and PBR beer is for you if you help. No. No. I'm a Sam no. Adams man. You treat me with respect. No. No, thank you. Will the Series X ever have the feature that allowed shaders for Minecraft to be able to be used on the console? What? Microsoft first used this feature to promote the console and made people want to buy it. I don't know what you're talking about. I remember there was like a like a really fancy like Minecraft texture pack that was being it was like realistic lighting and like full 4K support and then they dropped it. You know, uh, a really big showing at E3. I don't know if that's the same thing. But I don't know. The ray tracing? They're saying ray tracing. Yeah. I don't know. That's the show. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go over there and watch it on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and any and every podcast service but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms uh i don't think i'm gonna stream on wednesday i might though i don't know uh thursday oh that's because thursday i can't because i'm probably gonna be in brooklyn Mm. uh so this week's gonna be a little wacky uh but I'll I'll definitely uh, see you for the Nintendo podcast this week. We'll talk about the Mario Wonder because that direct is on Thursday. Right now, you can go watch Jackson, and I will see you. Tell him I'm gonna beat him up. Tell him Will's coming for him. Goodbye. Bye.